just yesterday in a press conference over the NFL uh, and owners and what they should do about players. Some of them he's referred to as SOBs. Uh, for not standing up for the national anthem. I wonder how this next guest feels about that. The former Army Ranger, former Detroit Lions linebacker, Caleb Campbell. Uh, Caleb, very good to have you. Um, where do you see this going, this whole heated back and forth? They hope to resolve it in this meeting today, Caleb, in New York. What, what, what do you think they should do? I don't know if they're going to ask, you know, necessarily resolve it in the meeting today. I think it's just too complex of an issue. I do hope that some conclusions are drawn in this meeting. And unfortunately, I think that it's just going to be, it's not going to be a win-win situation. It's going to be a win-lose situation. So, you know, whether it's the, uh, the football fans that so-called lose or the players that so-called lose in this situation, I do hope that the NFL and the commissioner do whatever they can absolutely do to make sure that they help um, to appeal to that side and to make football what it once was and what we all want it to be again. Do you have a position on this of players who who kneel out the national anthem, uh, that sort of thing? Uh, absolutely, I do. Um, probably not the most popular opinion, but when it was about the protest, when it was about police brutality, Neil, I can honestly say that I would give anything uh, to shake Colin Kaepernick's hand. I honestly would. And I say that for this reason. When it was about police brutality, it's not about that anymore. And I right. think now uh, the tides have turned, right? And But when it was about police brutality, you know, I would love to say thank you to Colin Kaepernick. And that's because I grew up in the Texas Panhandle. I grew up in the Bible Belt, uh, Perryton, Texas, a small farm town in uh, the Texas Panhandle. And we had no, we had no African Americans. We had no black people in our town. And when I was in junior high, I remember, quick story, I remember playing basketball on an AAU basketball team, an all-black basketball team. And I had one of my teammates come and visit. I had one of my teammates come and visit. And I remember sitting in the grocery store parking lot with my mother in the van uh, with my friend. And my mother was in the store actually shopping. And a prominent figure in our community, he walked out of the store. And he looked at me. And he saw my friend. And he looked back at me. And he said, what's he doing here? And I had no idea what he wow. meant. I'm thinking, like, oh, he just doesn't know my friend. And he's wondering, like, who's the stranger that I'm hanging out with? It wasn't until years later that I, I realized that he was asking, why is a black guy with you in our town? And that's the honest truth. And fast forward now, because of my upbringing and because of the world and that I experienced growing up in this small Texas Panhandle Bible Belt town, um, I could not for the life of me comprehend when I would hear about police brutality, when I would hear about unarmed black people being shot for no reason. Like my first thought, Neil, and I, you can call me ignorant, the American people can call me ignorant, but I know I am not the exception. My first thought was they must have done something to deserve it. And that was honest to God my first thought. And until Colin, because I, because I could not fathom this reality that you'd be shot because of your skin color. You'd be shot because of your race. So like, I couldn't actually comprehend to, that because that was never my reality. You're very sympathetic to, I'm sorry, Caleb, to their, I'm very to their right to do this. And I guess then... But I think that's the issue too, Neil. It's like the empathy. Like, America right. is missing empathy. Like, listen, at the end of the day, we are all in the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what we're all after. And life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to one side of this argument looks like standing, acknowledging, and honoring the American flag and the national anthem. That's what life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness looks for me because of the way that I've experienced America. But I would be absolutely naive to think that other people experience the same America that I experienced. No doubt. And on so the other the, side you know of the argument, come life, up liberty, this, and the though, pursuit of I'm sorry, Kev, but again, the press yes, I, I apologize. Well, one of the things that's come up is how owners handle this going forward. And Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys has said, well, Absolutely. you can kneel before the national anthem like we did at one game, and then everyone is up for the national anthem, and those that don't honor that, uh, they're benched for the game. What do you think of that? I think it's double standards across from the NFL. Um, I'm unfortunately very displeased with Roger Goodell. Um, I think there, are been, there have been double standards time and time again uh, with this entire issue from Colin kneeling when this began uh, last year, late last year, and then also with what's happening now. I think the NFL needs to, they need to come out with actually a standard operating procedure and actual protocol. And listen, if you do kneel, that means you're going to get fined just like if you wear pink outside of the month of October. 
it's just the same thing here now happening. Mm -hmm. Like there is a standard operating procedure. This is what the rule book says. This is what the manual says. And if you choose to behave outside of our guidelines that we have put into motion, put into place, you will be fined accordingly. But there's, it, it really is no difference. Now, the problem is, is that there have been double standards from the beginning. And I 100% this is on Roger Goodell and the NFL. That he hasn't been consistent, right? He has not been consistent at all. Caleb, thank you. A unique perspective on this, certainly coming. Thanks, Neil, for having uh, me.